Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining this session, Programming as a Form of Art. Uh, my name is Sne, and I will be moderator for this session. Uh, let me first introduce uh, the speaker. Uh, we have here Ruben Gonzalez, who is um, in artistic circles, more known as Ruben with beard. And he describes himself as a, a crafter of craftsmen. Um, and whether that's uh, in development or art or in both, we're just about to discover. Um, I would like to invite you to interact, share where you're joining from in the chat. And if you have any questions for Ruben, uh, you can put them in the Q&A section and we will make sure, I will make sure that Ruben uh, answers them at the end of this session. Thank you all for joining. Ruben, the floor is yours. Of course, I would have to start muted. Thank you so much for the introduction, Sne. So um, let me welcome everyone. Wow, that's a, a good start, muted and without video. So starting again, welcome to this session. In this session, we are going to talk about art and code. And we'll try to find the art in the code in our everyday tasks. The purpose here of this session is to inspire you and to help you to face our day-to-day -day coding tasks with new eyes and with new inspiration. But first things first, you already know my name and of course my looks, but um, I would like also to tell a little bit about myself. I like to think about myself as being curious, a venturesome and a thinker. I'm not sure how many people that actually do know me really think that this would describe me well, but for the sake of this session, let's assume that. I've been working with the OutSystems platform since the IntelliWarp version was released. If you are not aware, it's version 5.0. But throughout the years, I ended up seeing myself more kind of a uh, code crafter. And I'm now honored to be recognized and as an OutSystems MVP. If you have any question or anything that you'd like to ask, um, not within this session, but afterwards, please feel free to reach me out in any of these formats or contact forms. Uh, nevertheless, as I first start telling you about myself, you possibly noticed that absolutely nothing that I said uh, is actually fully or completely related with art. However, um, art is very much about thinking, thinking about various concepts about life, about purpose, and about all of this. However, in our daily, uh, um, daily life, or when we typically think about art, we think about, for example, the beautiful Mona Lisa from Leonardo da Vinci, or we think about the athletic David from Michelangelo, or even cinema here represented by the first try in motion picture with the running horse, or even architecture here represented by the Singer House in St. Petersburg, which by the way is in Art Nouveau style. Or you might also say, what about theater and literature here represented by Hamlet from William Shakespeare. But art being present since our beginning as mankind, has our beginning of our history, is it just that? Is it just the visual, the audio, all of the things that we have seen before? What is art? So to start this session, we are going to start by trying to answer to this question in the best possible way that we can. So for starters, let's start by looking to the etymology of the word. So the word art comes from Latin and it actually means skill and craft, which is not exactly matching what our possibly current understanding of art is. And even more interestingly, if we look to the equivalent word in Greek, we see that the 
the equivalent word, it's the root word for technique and technology. If this is not strange enough, then let's go and look at the dictionary. So art has its defined in dictionary or one of the first definitions is that it's a skill acquired by experience, study or observation. So when we are thinking about Mona Lisa, for sure we are not thinking, and we are thinking that that's a piece of art, that's beautiful art. We are definitely not thinking about the skill, the experience, the study or the observation. Another definition is that uh, it's a branch of learning, which is correct, but it's very um, accurate uh, in, in, in that sense, but not exactly, once again, what we're looking for. And the last definition that I found in this particular dictionary is that it's an occupation requiring knowledge or skill. And if you think about it, that actually completely matches our own profession that, uh, well, it's an occupation that requires knowledge and skill. Nevertheless, uh, one of the things that you notice is that in medieval ages, there was uh, a term called liberal arts that is still nowadays used uh, as a reference to a higher degree in educational programs. And liberal arts in medieval times were the seven branches of knowledge known as, for example, arithmetic, ge um, geometry, music, astrology, logic, rhetoric, and grammar. And this might leave you a little bit confused as it left me at the beginning, um, because there's a good reason for that, which is our understanding of art, of what is art has changed. We now commonly understand by the word art, uh, the word or the, what is fine art, meaning painting, music, literature, theater, cinema. So these are all fine arts, which is a branch of art. So this actually makes then things simple for us to understand that um, art has been reduced nowadays to a subset, to fine art. And that makes things simple for us to understand and to have a clear, proper definition of art? Well, if I'm asking, of course, you know that the answer is no. Artists throughout the centuries have struggled and have all the way created new techniques, new styles, all the way to try to understand what is art and to, in by doing so, also questioning what is the purpose and where actually art starts and where it actually ends. And this, and if art actually requires an artist or if it actually is by itself without purpose, without the need to have a proper artist. And of course, with that, what is actually not art as well. And with this exploring every aspect of what people can see as art, including canning uh, own feces and then selling them in an exhibition. So coming back to the original question, what is art? To answer to this question now in a proper way, we need to turn our head into um, the proper people and uh, into the proper science that studies it which would be the philosophy of art. This branch of philosophy studies the nature of art, including concepts such as interpretation, representation and expression, and form. So it studies exactly what is art and what can be considered art. And there are, all the way from through history, many philosophers have dwelled exactly in this branch and with this question. And more than 25 centuries of Western thought on the matter have all come or have all in common one thing and one simple thing, which is art is anything that is human made. So although all of these philosophers lived in the, all these different ages and periods of time in, uh, in, the, in the Western 
culture, they all agree, uh, or the basis for all of their thought and theory is that actually art is only something that is human made, has uh, opposed to activities or something that derives from nature. Imagine a sunset. A sunset is beautiful by itself. However, cannot be considered a work of art because it has no, it's not human made. It, had, it has no human touch on it. However, if a person takes a picture of the sunset or paints the sunset or records an audio during sunset, these can be considered art because it has the human imprint, the human impression over it. So with this simple or rather simple definition in mind, we can easily conclude that programming is a form of art because it's human made. And that would be very simple and uh, straightforward. But relying on this argument would be, I would say lame or even lazy on my side. So um, with the time that we have, allow me to shine some light over this topic or, some, or share some thoughts on what or why I think that programming is a form of art. So code like art, and code is just like art, it requires inspiration. Inspiration for you to approach the problem and to understand how it's the best way to solve it. It requires ingenuity that, it, that with the current techniques and current technology to actually to solve it. And it also requires a strong sense of aesthetics as we are going to see in a little bit what exactly this means. Then does this mean that this piece of code, it's, um, it required inspiration to be created and as such is a piece of art, by the way, created by me in 2011. Uh, does it mean that it's a piece of art or even this one? Does it mean that it, because it required ingenuity to solve a given problem and because of it, it's a piece of art or even this one? It's aesthetic and as such is a piece of art. Well, notice that the developer that did this at the time even put here a comment saying in Portuguese saying, this is indeed art. So we can, as we have the previous definition, we can say that all code is art indeed, because all code requires ingenuity. It requires inspiration and it requires at least some sense of aesthetics. But this last part um, requires some more definition, requires some more thought on how we can see beauty in code. If we don't have a definition to support us, to support our understanding of beauty, how can we define beauty? How can we know that something is beauty, beautiful? For that, we need to turn our heads to the teachers, the thinkers, the theorists, or simply the philosophers of programming. Philosophers such as Donald Knuth, um, Martin Fowler or Robert Martin have been with their work, with their books, explaining and trying to tell us what makes a code beautiful. Or as, in, as um, Robert Martin says, what makes a code smell when it's actually bad. So, in philosophy, there is one thing that can help us to define something, which is defining its opposite. So we can easily, much more easily say, um, instead of saying, what is beautiful code, we can say, what is ugly code? So ugly code is code that compromises end user efficiency. Ugly code is code that compromises program performance. Ugly code is code that is hard to maintain, hard to evolve, hard to extend, hard to read, hard to understand. And with that, 
it's not expressive by itself. So with this in mind, and with the definition of ugly code really struck, stuck in our heads, we can now look into our code and try to make it beautiful or see the beauty in it. So has some final thoughts or something that I would like to, you to take away from this session is that all code is art, but not all is beautiful. And to actually to make beautiful code, we should not only rely on our inspiration and ingenuity, but also in shape and in evolve our sense of aesthetics and our crucial sense of understanding what makes code beautiful. And as Donald Knut once put, and I could not say it even better, is that a programmer who views himself as an artist will enjoy what he does and will do it better. So this to say, don't just code, don't just make the tasks that are assigned to you in Jira or in other, any other tool that you are using, but instead always aim and always try to create beautiful art. Thank you. Great session, Ruben. Started very amazingly with the muted <laughs> and without video. Well, it's when the things happen live, that's how it goes. So we have um, uh, some questions coming up. Um, there are two questions from, um, from Gloria. And um, one thing she's saying is that um, art is not something objective. Uh, so it's very subjective, uh, what we consider to be art or what we consider to be beautiful. And also, um, Art can be complicated, but um, it should be simple. And also in the chat, someone said that art uh, should be simple. Um, so does this apply to the, to the code as well? It's, it's subjective or rather it's objective. And should it be simple or simplified in order to, uh, to be art? We did agree on easy questions only, right? Yeah, that's why I ask everyone to give me some difficult questions. Exactly. Ones, right? So thank you so much for your questions. Um, going a little bit to uh, what Gloria was uh, um, commenting and saying. So for let's start with the first part, which art is subjective. Uh, there's no question to that. And the art, discussing art, it's a whole, let's call it science. Okay. Uh, there's a whole branch of philosophy with many Thought, uh, thinkers throughout the, the, the ages discussing and arguing and counter-arguing about that. So that's why I actually grabbed on the most basic thing, which is art is uh, anything that is human-made, which is the base of all of them. When it comes to programming uh, and regarding um, if it's art or not, just by this basic uh, uh, sense, this basic definition, it makes sense to be art. And joining it, what I was trying to convey in terms of inspiration, in terms of aesthetics, uh, in terms of ingenuity, uh, the idea is that it helps, um, this makes it art. Now, when it comes to the aesthetics part, which was the part and most relevant part that you're commenting regarding if it should be simple uh, or, or if, if it should be complex or if it depends, well, there is, of course, um, things that we should have as a base, as a concept. So, for example, when we were describing uh, what ugly code is, um, we are saying concrete things that actually make, can, that we can very concretely say that it creates bad code that makes the code ugly, not beautiful. So even though many times we need to look into our code with, with, um, with context of the, of the project and everything, 
if we keep these small rules or these small things in mind that are very concrete, that will help us to always to make the code more beautiful. Not perfect, but beautiful, one step at a time. I'm not sure if this answered to the question, and I'm sorry if I took too long to answer to it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm pretty sure it gives, uh, it provides uh, some clarity. Uh, but um, the next question is actually very much related to, to this one and says, could you provide examples of beautiful code? I don't know if that's possible, but um, if you I can will. give some characteristics. Well, the, the, the characteristics would be exactly like we were talking about what ugly code is. So, for example, if we look at the, the characteristics that we were here, that I was trying to, oops, that I was trying to tell about ugly code. So we can immediately uh, see, we can immediately imagine. Of course, it's hard for me to take out of my pocket uh, examples immediately. Um, but looking at this, I, I'm pretty sure that you can immediately imagine uh, parts of your own code, of your uh, program, of previous projects, uh, previous programs that you worked on that actually match on this, that match these problems. Cool. So I will just, I, there is a lot of questions actually, uh, and interesting ones. Uh, we only have a um, few more minutes, uh, so I probably will not be able to, to ask them all. So please vote on the questions um, that you would like to see answered here by Ruben. If uh, he, we don't reply all of them, uh, as Ruben mentioned, you can reach out to him. So the next question is from Miko. If programming is a form of art and performing this art form produces some results, should programming be considered as an art where form follows function? That's a very interesting question. And actually that's not only applied to programming, but for example, it can be applied also to architecture. As in, um, one of the things, uh, architecture and not only design by itself, one of the beauties of, for example, uh, Nordic design, Scandinavian design is exactly that, that the, has the, the, the shape follows the purpose, follows the functionality, the objects other than being very easy uh, to, to use, they are appealing by themselves. So in programming, um, I would say that we can have the both variants uh, where we can have, if we look on to the most utterly, and of course, myself and many of us are very much working on enterprise applications where uh, we want things to be uh, working and we don't want extra code to maintain. We don't want... Um, a supers of code, like code that is not necessary, of course, we tend to um, very much follow this principle or try to follow, which is we code the minimum possible to in order to achieve the results, because the more we code, the more actually uh, we have to maintain, the more we actually have to uh, evolve in the future. Um, but we can also have the more completely artistic side where you are just creating lines of code by the beauty of it and by the flow that you make the machine go through in order to reach to a given end. And there is, for example, it's starting to appear very much nowadays where you see in museums, in modern art museums, interactive pieces of art that, for example, based on an algorithm and based on some contact that the human has with a piece of art, it generates something random and unique based on the touch and based on the, for example, skin con um, conductivity of the person. So that would be an example of actually the code not following a shape because it has no purpose specifically. Cool. 
Uh, by the way, I don't know if you can see, but um, this uh, session is creating a lot of interaction and people yeah. in the chat uh, are commenting on the beauty of the code, on um, the fact that um, uh, it's not an art, but it's it's the usefulness of it and so on. I hope you, you have opportunity to check and it's very interesting. Next question. Um, which is my uh, personal favorite because it says, uh, it's from Tiago Bernardo, how to make developers fall in love with code as art. I think either you have the love from the start or it's difficult to get it. What's your take on this? We don't have, uh, I would say that the majority of people don't have the love for start. Myself, I didn't have. Until a certain point, I started looking um, into it in a different manner. I started seeing like we being almost um, composers, being almost writers, writing a novel and uh, being the end result of the novel would uh, actually, just like I thought would be writing a novel that I would be telling a story and leading the reader to a specific mindset, to a specific thought, to a specific feelings. Also with our code, we are helping people or going throughout their day life or we are causing people to, um, to question things or we are, we are the, the way that I started seeing it is that we are writing, we are writers. We are using uh, alphabet and the language that we know to, in order to make our novel alive and with that to bring feelings to help people to achieve their goals, their aims. So not just by the art itself, but also with the telling the story and with the making the other side uh, different or thinking uh, differently. Cool. Okay, so sorry, folks. I know there is a lot of questions, but we actually have time just for one more. And um, the question is, is the code that our system produces art? Uh, someone in the chat was saying that um, our system is actually a very good example because it's a, it's a visual tool. Um, so for, for you, you had experience in both, in like let's say traditional programming and our system. So it's our systems produces art better than uh, traditional code. Well. Uh, from the moment that we say better or worse, we need to have a definition of being better or worse. And uh, our current definition, let's say in terms of aesthetical principles is actually not covering possibly the visual beauty. I would say nevertheless that out systems has a, has a code or has a way of making code has beauty has a specific beauty that other languages uh, don't have so easily, which is by being visual, it automatically makes it um, more expressive. We can visually express decisions, visually express what we meant to do. And I think that, for example, this is a field that is very unexplored by people. That, for example, the fact that you can uh, put comments, but people put comments in the coding out systems, just like those cards. But for example, that you can make it in a way that the code is, that the comment is around the code. So you can make it even more expressive, even more visual. So I would say that, yes, out systems being, having an extra, abstraction visual layer, as in being more abstract from the code itself and being more visual can enable it to become a fine art, if we can say so, <laughs> by allowing these things, yeah. Okay, cool. And we are, uh, we have to close. We don't have more time. The other sessions are starting soon. 
Um, thank you all uh, for being here. I think we have over 140 people who actually see the session and interacted quite a lot. So I would really invite you to continue this conversation um, in other spaces, in the forums or somewhere else, because it seems like an interesting uh, discussion. Ruben, thank you very much. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the OSDC. Bye.